Welcome to another episode of Teach the Skill. Today I'd like to work on skipping. Skipping is one of those uh, foundational skills that children just love to do. It's very common for me to see students in the morning get off the school buses and skip into school. It just seems like it's one of those really fun things that, that you know, almost like a code that they've broken. Uh, let's talk about the advanced pattern first. And, and uh, when we look at skipping, we, we kind of divide the legs and arms. Uh, but the first thing, if you look at the legs, we want to, after, after we roll off the heel and we come down, we want to see a ball of the foot landing. So, so and you may see less heel landing. And uh, if I go faster, it may be more, it may be more uh, just ball of the foot. Uh, but the, the key is that after it is that I come down on that there's that little hop that initiates from the ball of the foot. Uh, now uh, looking at the arms, what we'd like to see are oppositional arms that uh, are efficient. They're compact. The elbows are flexed and um, and very relaxed, relaxed hands. Um, so let's talk about beginners. Uh, if we look at the legs, sometimes you're going to have very young students that don't quite understand what hopping is yet. And, and it's really a hop on this foot, then a hop on that foot. And we kind of, we talk about it like that. Um, but it's going to be very important to look at your child and, and see if they can hop on both feet. It may be the case that they can hop on their dominant foot, but they can't hop on their non-dominant foot yet. If that's the case, then we just extend the, that hopping so that they can do more and more. They build up their leg strength and, and coordination, and, uh, you know, balance and everything that goes into being able to hop on one foot. Uh, once they can hop four or five times in a row on each foot, they should be fine to, to begin to learn how to skip. Now with the kids that are just kind of getting the idea of it, occasionally I'll see somebody that <laughs> they have a one-footed skip. And um, that's not wrong. It's just kind of meaning that they're, they're beginning to get the idea. And uh, one of my favorite cues for this is something that I learned from a friend, Jeff Susan, who was a PE teacher in our department uh, a few years back. And Jeff's cue to get kids to, to skip on both feet was to really elevate that knee and that seems to be one of those great code breaker uh, tasks that just help kids to get the idea of it. So once you have skipping in, in both feet I, I start to look at the arms and and my cue with little kids is that, that I just say try to skip with pointy elbows um, which is just to keep that elbow flexed uh, but what you may see in the beginning uh, you may see uh, arms that are occasionally both in front. You may see you may see a bilateral arm swing. All these things are not wrong. They're just where you are on the way. And as they transition to oppositional arms, it's very common for them to do big arm swings with their arms straight. Again, not wrong, just meaning that they're starting to get more of an upper body, lower body connection, and, and they're kind of working out this puzzle. Eventually, I'd like to see them with their arms in these compact arm shapes with hands re that are relaxed. Now, once they have the idea of this, as we do with, with all of our other locomotor skills, we start thinking about changing direction. So I skip forward, and then I would also be able to skip backward. Um, that leads to patterning where I might go one, two, three, turn, one, two, three, turn. And you'll notice as I, if I'm, if I'm doing that turn and, and in a continuous kind of way, I try to maintain my, the uh, uh, fluidness in my arm swing so that, so that when they go to change, it doesn't turn into a kind of a, um, a myriad of arm, you know, balance reactive arm motions. I want that to be um, nice and smooth right through that transition. And again, that's just upper body, lower body, real coordinated, real fluid um, 
uh, arm swings that are real connected to the feet. Now if I'm using this as a warm up with my athletes, I'm asking, just like I did with sliding, I'm asking them to really get a connection, a force connection between their arms and feet. And I'm really trying to wake up the nervous system. And so that, that's one of my targets when I'm, I'm training athletes and trying to get them to be uh, uh, really, really switched on in that nervous system when we're getting ready to play a sport. Now, once, once you get them to the point where they can skip in different directions, um, let's talk about some other things that we can do to kind of push and pull on this skill. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we do is to match their skip to a partner. We've talked about this in some of the other skills. And then as we do that, they can take the lead and they can change their skip so they can shorten up their stride or lengthen their stride and their partner has to match that. Uh, the other thing I love to do is to play tag games where everybody has to skip. Um, I sometimes even mix up the locomotor skills so one group is sliding and another group is skipping. Anything that you can do like that just sort of create these fun, really natural puzzles. Kids like to do it and, and, um, and it helps to really build some robustness into this, uh, this coordination and, and, and I think it's, it's very fun as well. Um, you can uh, skip to a beat and just remember like with gallop skip is a um, it's an uneven beat and so you would uh, you would do it with um, with uh, two little beats together um, and then finally if um, if they're they're very good at it the last thing is I that I would add is music and music's always the hardest because it, it assumes beat competence. And as I mentioned before, we don't see real strong beat competence much before second grade. So if, if, uh, if the child is, is six, six and below or, or even some seven-year-olds, uh, they still might not quite have beat competence yet. And, and, if, and if they don't, they don't understand what beat is or feel that beat, it will be difficult for them to, to match the beat, especially to music. But if they do, then finding the beat and skipping to the beat is just another great way to build some, uh, some real depth to this coordination. Well, thanks for listening today and have fun teaching your child how to skip.